ますなるほどはい、right. awesome. Welcome everyone. As more of you、um, start to come in, welcome、um, to the second webinar. Let's get let's talk strategy with Mighty Cause、um, and San Diego Gives.、Uh, if you are joining us, we would love to hear your name, who you are with. You can just type it into the chat box. Let us know,、um, and we will get started in a few seconds. Awesome. So, we have a ton of content to cover with you all today. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. But as you all are coming in, if you want to just let us know your name and the organization you're representing, you can just click the chat box and just let us know.、Um, so, again, I'm Sarah. I'm with Mighty Cause. We are the platform provider for San Diego Gives again this year. We're super excited to be here.、Um, just a heads up that we are recording this webinar. So, it'll be recorded and then uploaded to the San Diego Gives University page on the site. Um, we also have Lauren here today representing San Diego Gives. So I'm going to pass it over to Lauren. You can say hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning. It, is, it feels like a Monday. I don't know about anybody else, but I hope everybody had a really great weekend. Glad to see everybody back today for our second of two Mighty Cause specific webinars.、Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, I'm trying to, I saw something in the chat. My brain got distracted.、Um, So,、um, like I said last week, we just talked about getting started today, diving more into、um, making a, a real plan to put together. Remembering, too, that there's several other things going on.、Um, San Diego Gives University wise, I'll throw that in the chat, of course, throughout today. If you're ever wondering <clears throat> how do I do something or where do I go, the best place、uh, is still to go directly to the nonprofit toolkit on the website as well. And、um, thanks, Sarah, for, for being here today. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna cover the agenda real quick and then I'm gonna turn off my camera and get right into it because we have just a bunch of stuff, like I said, to cover.、Um, so we are gonna go over the overview kind of、uh, things that you should start thinking about as you're gearing up for the event. I'm gonna share the resources that are available to you so we can make sure that you take advantage of all the materials that are provided.、Um, we're gonna get into all of these different campaign strategies and tips that we have. Um, if you have questions throughout the webinar, you can send them in. Lauren is going to kind of filter those to me.、Um, and then, of course, if there's questions at the end, we also have time for a QA segment.、Um, one thing I do want to just hit on is that there is a ton of content in here. So、um, I hope that everyone can get something out of it, whether you participated in the giving event last year or if you're brand new this year, there's going to be a ton of different materials for you.、Um, Pick and choose you know, what you have capacity for.、Uh, every team is different and every team has different you know, goals. So, kind of just as you're watching the webinar, just like take notes, think of things that you want to kind of work toward or create a goal for yourself,、um, and we'll get started. Okay, so、um, first things first. Uh, once you're registered and you're ready to go, the biggest thing you're going to want to do is start to think about、um, customizing your profile, of course. We covered all of this content pretty much on like, the basics for how to get started in the first webinar. So I just want to direct everyone to that webinar. Just you know, in your own time, you can learn about all the nuts and bolts in case you missed it. It's there for you to download the slides and also to rewatch. Um, once you are all filled out, your profile is good to go. This is where kind of the second webinar comes in. You're going to want to really start to think about your communication strategies, the different outlets that you have available to reach your donors. You'll really want to start thinking about the goals you have your organization during the giving day.、Um, you'll also want to start thinking about securing matching grants if that's available to you, thinking about how to entice your donors. 
Um, you'll want to start thinking about how to engage your community members, your supporters, your ambassadors, um, thinking about peer to peer fundraising. Um, and just really overall right now is the perfect time to get creative, get excited about your campaign and plan on how you want to really connect um, and make your overall appeal to your donors. Um, like I said, I want to make sure you have all the resources available, available to you. Um, these tools are super wonderful. There's a ton of tips, tricks, FAQs, walkthroughs, support articles, all linked for you. Um, in the San Diego Gives University, we have a bunch of trainings for you to review. So make sure this is kind of your first stop on the train to kind of figuring out your strategy for the event. Um, once you kind of have reviewed all of this information, um, we're going to get into campaign strategies. We did have this slide in the last webinar, but I think it's super important that we hit on it again. Um, basically, your goals for the giving event are up to you and your organization. Um, typically, giving days, you're raising funds within a short time frame. Your goal is to spread awareness of your mission and work. You're working collectively to raise money for your event and causes. You're engaging your sponsors, your community partners. Um, so these are kind of like how the giving days work is also the goals um, that you're going to have your organization. So while we're thinking about goals that you want to get out of San Diego gives for the event, um, we also want to start to talk about mini goals. So the trick to making the most of your campaign is to have your overall goals. And if you're going to sustain your fundraising momentum during the event, the goal is to also set mini goals. So overall goals are going to help your organization know what you want to get out of the giving day. These are can be, you know, monetary goals, non-monetary goals, something like a unique donor count. If you want to try more peer to peer fundraising, securing sponsors, both your overall goals and your mini goals are going to help, you know, build and generate the buzz and excitement that you need during the event to reach, um, you know, your monetary goals or whatever have you. Um, so when we're talking about mini goals, not to confuse you, but these work like a timeline to help you reach your overall goals, if that makes sense. So an example of this would be um, like if you have an overall goal to get, say, 50 new donors during the event day, you're going to want to set a mini goal or like a halfway goal of 25 donors by noon um, or another mini goal for 6 p.m., et cetera. So you can kind of get the idea. These mini goals can be applied to any goal that you have for the giving event. Um, you are going to want to set these mini goals because these act as exciting milestones um, to continue kind of hyping up the momentum and getting donors to donate or spread the word. Um, so one thing to keep in mind when you're kind of setting your mini goals is to know when your donors are typically most active and to kind of adjust your hourly or section goals accordingly. So if you know like there are certain times during the day that will be slower for you, you may want to boost that time period. Um, by utilizing a matching grant to shake things up um, and get some momentum going. So maybe during dinner time, you know, that's a slower period. So you'll want to consider adding a mini goal um, for yourself to try to get extra donations during the slower period. Maybe you get a matching grant, a dinner time matching grant um, to kind of keep your momentum going so you can keep working to your goals. Um, so once you have your overall goals pinned down and your mini goals, we're going to get into seed donations. Um, so these are the very first donations. They're going to help break the ice. Um, so people to ask for seed donations are going to be your board members, your staff, especially those who are directors or high level leaders at your organization, um, your organization's volunteers, anyone at your organization who is super engaged in your work. Uh, just a reminder, these are seed donations, so they're typically smaller. They don't have to be huge. Don't overwhelm, you know, yourself with having to get seed donations, but this is something to have in the bank so that, you know, when the giving day approaches, you have some large kind of accumulated seed donations, which really in the end encourages more people to donate. Um, it kind of just helps break the ice for donations. Uh, let's see. We are going to get into matching grants. Um, so, of course, one of the key strategies for driving donations on your giving day is going to be securing a matching grant. Uh, a matching grant, if you're brand new to matching grants, is it's basically a large donation that your organization is going to use to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. So you can do a whole lot within the Mighty Cause Matches tool. You can set a cap for donation matching, uh, which what that means is um, tw like two hundred dollars per. Uh, match, say, as an example, so that someone doesn't come along and eat up an entire donation. So if you have like 
a thousand dollar match and you know someone comes up and offers a thousand dollars and then eats up the entire match and then all your fundraising momentum is is gone it's great to get that match met but one thing to think about is um how to let the match kind of last so that more people get a little piece of the pie uh and it incentivizes more people to raise funds um donors love to get kind of a buy one get one deal so thinking about how to stretch your match is a really good idea when you set it up um, when you're considering prospects for matching grants you're going to want to look to your board members first and foremost um, sometimes individual board members are super happy to provide a matching grant but one thing you can also consider is asking your board to work together to provide the match so for instance if your board pays dues you could ask them to pay their dues and instead use those dues as a matching grant. Um, so, hold on one second, sorry. Um, so also another idea, major gift donors who have given large donations to your organization in the past, those are excellent prospects for matches. Um, and providing a match is a super fun way for people to start to liven up their donations. So if you've had you know, a donor who has given in the past a large amount, that's a perfect person to ask, hey, can we use your donation this year and put it towards a match? Um, these are also really nice ways to kind of make your donors feel more seen. It's a, a more unique way for them to donate to your cause. Uh, they know that the match that they're providing is going to help you get even more funds. So that adds a little a nice touch to these people who have donated in large amounts before. Um, but at this start, at this stage of the game, it's a really good time to start making phone calls, setting up your emails, starting to really cultivate your prospects, let them know what you're doing, let them know that you're thinking about, you know, getting a match going, if they have any ideas or if they're interested. Uh, and then once they are warm to the idea, you can start to shore up details and talk to them about setting up the match. Um, as far as kind of promoting your match, so like I said, Mighty Cause has really great tools available to you. But at the end of the day, your matching grant is a really wonderful marketing tool. So in order to make the most of your matching grant, you're going to need to promote it. Um, once it's set up, you can kind of see I took some screenshots to kind of show you um, the different kind of features inside the match tool. You can queue your matches. Uh, you can see past matches. You can see live matches. Um, you can also see that there's a spot to add a logo if you have, you know, Starbucks or whoever, like if there's a company that's matching. Um, or even if you just have a donor, like we see a lot of matches that have people smiling faces just to give kind of a personal touch to the match. Um, you can also promote your match. So once you have it all queued and it's live, you're going to want to include the match in your social media links, promote it in your emails, your campaigns. Um, also sending multiple kind of emails, letting them know that the match is only up for like, say how you have like $500 left in the match or $300, those little countdowns are going to add extra urgency, which is going to make people, you know, go and donate. So these matches are really great marketing tools um, and to help boost your donations. Um, I want to kind of start to talk a little bit about your management of reports. So as we kind of talk about the goals that you have, I also want to put numbers behind a bunch of these things. Um, so the different reports that we have are divided into five seconds sections so you have donations offline donations retention and recurring donations and disbursements all right so donations and offline donations with mighty cause a donation report you're able to view all the info associated with each donation made to your organization um, through the platform so on this report you can filter and search for a particular donation or a set of donation um, it only shows 30 days but you can easily adjust the time frame filter by campaign you can also see all of the donations that are coming in through different peer to peer fundraisers. Um, so you so if someone sets up a peer to peer and we'll talk more about peer to peer in a little bit, but if someone sets up a peer to peer, you can see those donations and the pages that the donors donated to and all that good stuff. Um, recurring donations we'll talk a bit in the next slide and retention we'll talk about in the next slide as well. Disbursements, this section, your admins can see all the disbursements to date sent to your organization, the status of each disbursement, and the method of disbursement. You can also click each date to view like a detailed breakdown. Um, so there's any questions on that? Yes, these slides will be shared. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Um, alrighty. So when it comes to offline donations, um, 
This is a very important aspect of online fundraising, just being able to track and manage your donation information. Um, the offline donations are of course added, you're gonna wanna show your fundraising success outside of the platform. Uh, any gifts made via cash or check during the giving period are gonna count towards you know, your total. Um, so all of that is here for you to see kind of, we, we went through this also in the first um, webinar. So I have screenshots of it, but if you want kind of an in-depth walkthrough, you can refer to the first webinar uh, getting started, but you're gonna go to your reports and you can click donations. This is where you're gonna add offline donations. Whoops. Um, and then of course, you're gonna add all of the details here. So you can add like the donor's name, email address, the source, just everything so that you can keep track of it and it'll um, be added to your giving day totals. Uh, your retention report is gonna be a really wonderful tool for you this year, if, especially if you have already previously participated in San Diego Gives last year. Um, this section allows you to export your list of unretained donors. Uh, you can see who has been retained, so people who have given to your campaign during the event. Um, you can also send direct individual emails and a bunch more through this section. Again, the screenshots, you can see the reports, retention, uh, status, you can find all retained or not retained. Um, and the time period is where you can select specifically San Diego Gives 2020, 2021, um, and that'll show you who has been retained and who has not been retained. Um, once you select not retained, you can download a spreadsheet of that data and then you can directly email them. Um, or you can also, I mean, yeah, you can, I think you can also email through this platform and it'll open up another window uh, for your email. So if you have like a Gmail or something, you can directly email through that. But this is all downloadable. Um, this is going to be very important data for you. You're going to want to definitely reach out to those who gave to your campaign last year. So make sure that's on your to-do list. Um, recurring donations is also something that you have the ability to manage on the Mighty Cause platform through San Diego Gives. When you're setting up your donation form, um, there's an option to have uh, monthly kind of donations as an option. So they could do a one-time donation or they can do a monthly donation. If you do not want them to do a monthly donation within your checkout for your organization, you can toggle that off so it's hidden. Um, but recurring donations are great. Uh, recurring donations are always wonderful. Um, and you can find all of the donors who are set up for recurring under your recurring donations portal. So this is pretty intuitive. It's all pretty straightforward. If you do have questions, you can let us know. Um, but you can kind of toggle like I showed in the previous one. It's all set up very similarly. Status, you can see all active or canceled. Um, you can also see how their donation is set up, if it's however they set up their uh, recurring donation. Um, if your donors need to update credit cards, if they need to do anything like that, um, they can set it up under their user account. So that's under their email. If they do need help or they need to reset a password, they can just reach out to support and we can get them uh, back into their account so that they can set up any credit cards or um, make any adjustments there. Um, the next slide is activating your ambassadors. So uh, of course your ambassadors are gonna be, you know, a really strong support system for you on the day of the event. These are your board members, volunteers, um, people who are highly engaged with your organization, your staff members, and so on. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure you reach out to your ambassadors and ask them to support you. Uh, this can be anything from sharing a link to your page, sharing a donate button with their friends in their own emails, um, or you know, going a little further, they can set up peer-to-peer -peer campaign pages to help you fundraise. Uh, this overall, reaching out to your ambassadors, it might feel kind of, if you've never reached out to people to ask to support, it might feel uncomfortable, but honestly, this is the best way for you to raise more funds, um, reach out to new donors, acquiring new donors, if that's a goal for your organization, this is going to be a way to do it. Typically, you know, your reach can go as far as those that you are directly connected to, and if you use those people to reach to their networks, you can go even further. Um, this is a great way to also kind of cultivate stronger supporters. So if you're thinking about how to kind of take those relationships with the people who support your organization to the next level, this is a really great way. 
Um, we'll talk about specifically how peer to peer campaigns are really wonderful tools for ambassadors to kind of cultivate into stronger supporters uh, in the next slide. Um, so peer to peer fundraising, like I said, is a really wonderful way for people to get more involved at a deeper level. Uh, peer to peer campaigns are easy ways for people to set up fundraisers to fundraise on your organization's behalf. Um, this is a chance for organiza uh, organization supporters to tell their story about your organization and how it's impacted them, um, why they're fundraising for you, uh, why they're excited to be a part of your organization. Like I said, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for people to ask. Um, board members, always a great starting point. Volunteers, staff, you know, your core group of people are great people to reach out to. Um, you as an organization can also make fundraising super easy for these uh, supporters. You can set up your own templates, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, to make fundraising just super easy. So you can kind of pre-fill different uh, items on a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. Um, I also want to show you kind of a screenshot of what it would look like on your organization's page. So next to the donate button, we have the fundraise button. This is where people will go to click to create a fundraiser page for you. Um, so they'll click there and then they'll be prompted to, do you want to start a fundraising page for this organization? They'll say yes. Um, they'll create peer to peer and then they can kind of fill out their own page. Uh, if you wanted to hide fundraising, if you, you know, don't want this button to show on the day of the event, totally fine. You can toggle it off uh, on your own. It's just this little megaphone. Um, and then, of course, I always want to point out the toggle off on an edit. Uh, edit mode because when you're editing anything on this page, you can see exactly what it would look like for your supporters by just turning on and off edit mode. So it's all on page editing. Um, we also have a really great peer to peer fundraising guide that's available in the toolkit. Uh, it's filled with really great just pages of, of wonderful kind of tips uh, that Mighty Cause put together. So you can definitely download that, review it. If you're brand new to peer to peer fundraising, um, kind of start small. Maybe you want to get a goal of five peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages, you know. Uh, don't be overwhelmed by peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. I think that everyone should try it. Um, just set smaller goals if you're brand new or if you don't have a whole lot of capacity to do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, and then if you are kind of familiar with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, uh, um, I'll talk to you in a minute if you're kind of next level. But anyways, so creating your peer to peer template. This is a screenshot of what the peer to peer template would look like for your organization to kind of fill in just a bunch of key information for those who are going to peer to peer fundraise for you. So when they click that fundraise button and they're ready to peer to peer fundraise, you can pre fill short stories. You can pre fill kind of an about section. You can add an image, a logo. You can set a fundraising goal for your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers if you want to set like a I don't know, $500 fundraising goal or whatever. Uh, this is all also editable, like peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, they can also edit their own goals, but you can pre-fill a bunch of this to just make it pretty seamless. Um, this is all found under on your dashboard once you log into your organization page. It'll be found under fundraising tools on the fundraising template. Uh, so be sure to fill that out. Um, and like I was saying, if you are looking for kind of a higher level of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising engagement, um, team fundraising is where it is at. Uh, this is pretty much the next level. It's a, uh, it's a team, so it's a bunch of individual peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers who are working together. Um, it creates, you know, friendly competition. You can see that there's a leaderboard, so everyone who is participating, each of their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages will be displayed. Um, they'll show how much they raise. You can set kind of, you can show how much, um, you can set a goal for your team. You can show kind of the status of it. Um, if people are going to join, you can set it to join this team. You can also have it privately join so that you have to share the link for those to join. Um, again, you can also create a template for teams. Uh, you can communicate with your team kind of uh, to keep everybody motivated. It's just a really great option, especially if you have just um, a lot of people, like say your board wants to fundraise together, you can make a board fundraising team. Um, if you've done peer-to-peer, -peer, this is a good next level to try out if you want to set a goal for yourself uh, in that way. Sarah, can we take just a, a quick break for a few questions? Sure. 
It's okay. Um, just let me scroll up to one from um, Terry that said, um, will there be plugins available whose widgets we can download to highlighting donors, donor counts in real time and for use on our own respective websites and social media assets to highlight our standing as official Sanio Gives partners? Um, I am not trying read to read that check. about, I had to read that about four times. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. It's in chat or is it in Q&A you said? It's in chat. Okay. Um, so the donor counts in real time, I at least know for Sanyo Gives as a whole, we do donor mm -hmm. counts in real time on the website, like during the live event. So now we're right, we're in pre-event, but in the live event, it'll show. Yes. So going up. Mm -hmm. So on the, the event <coughs> homepage, um, we'll have the donor timeline um, and we'll also show donor count uh, in that way. If you are keeping track of your own donor count, you'll have to do so kind of on your own individual organization pages, but we will track it as a whole for the event. So I think she was asking if are there widgets that can be downloaded to track that real time on their own event. So there's one. Sanio gives why, but if they wanted their own widget downloaded to track, is there something like that downloadable? Um, not through our platform. We don't have like a downloadable widget for that. Okay. And then, um, and then Terry, I think you're the second part was talking about highlighting your standing as official Sanio gives partners. And I, we did put some, mm -hmm. for a few weeks ago, we had a um, office hours where I think Terry, you were in there and had was part of the idea of of doing something like that. And so we have created some frames and some like logos that are on the website under Sanio Gives or under the nonprofit toolkit. And I'll make a note to make sure this week that we send those out, that those are specific, like those are pointed out um, in that email. Mm -hmm. And um, <sighs> thanks, Terry. Um, and then there's another question just about, so Sarah, has Facebook been fixed as a whole, the issues that we had on Facebook last week? That is a good question. I haven't checked on that this Monday yet. Um, I can take a peek uh, at the end and just let you know. Okay. And so then the second part of this other question was just, um, so I don't know if the challenge that Nicole's having is that because it sounds like it's just um, all of our social pages are linked. But when I try to add gallery features, it rejects it every time. Yes, that's connected to the Facebook. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that question is the bank account's been pending for over two weeks. I guess asking, uh, I honestly didn't know that you approved bank accounts. Uh, are you talking about EFT? So I assume so. EFT is pending. If you still have EFT outstanding, um, if you, if, if they can email you, Lauren, and let me know, and I'll have our support yeah. team just check in on those specific ones that are still awaiting EFT approval. Um, touching on the widget for donors, the organization page, your organization page will show how much money you've raised and how many donors, but we don't have a widget per se. So I don't know if that helps with that question. So you can keep track of, um, like you can reset your uh, metrics on your organization page, which we covered in the first webinar on specifically how to reset those metrics, but you can also um, so if you were to reset it for early giving on July 16th, uh, it'll start tracking how many donors have given to you. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Um, all righty. Let's see. Um, all righty. So we are going to move into email strategy. Um, to, 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 I'm gonna pull up my notes to make sure I'm giving everything properly. Um, okay, so your email strategy is gonna be one of the most important tools available to you during the event, just because emails are you know, the direct fast line to your supporters. Uh, unless people have unsubscribed to you, your message is gonna end up pretty much right in their inbox and send a notification to their phone. So you're literally in their hand. Um, in general, our strategy to give you is to always keep your emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Uh, most people are reading email on their phones, so you just want to be able to get your point across pretty quickly in a short amount of space. Um, people are much more likely to read the emails if they pertain directly to them, so we highly recommend that you consider segmenting your email list 
Uh, and if you're new to segmenting, it basically means sorting your donors into a few key groups, which means breaking out your full email list into different groups like people who have donated to you, you know, on a regular basis. Maybe you have a group of one-time donors. Um, maybe you have a group of people who are people who have come to your services but never actually donated. Volunteers, uh, you also want one if there's like sponsors. Uh, so basically, you aren't going to need to craft entirely new emails for the giving event, but you're going to want to tweak small things in each of these emails that you send out to a group. So, for example, if you have, you know, a large donor, a donor who gives large amounts, you're not going to want to say, hey, please consider donating, you know, $10 to us. Every bit counts on the day of the event. Um, you would want to do a different ask to a larger donor. Uh, the same with volunteers. You aren't going to want to just outright ask people who donate their time to you. Um, you may want to thank them for all they do to you, do for your organization, and then also say, please consider, you know, donating. Um, so just different ways of tailoring the same message to different groups of people uh, in a way that's going to resonate with them and kind of make them want to donate to you. Um, we also recommend doing A-B test and preview. So any emails that you put together, definitely preview them, send yourself a test copy. Um, when we talk about A-B testing, um, you have a, a lot of time between now and the giving event to kind of start to test different emails and the way you communicate your ask. Uh, this is also something that you're gonna wanna put on your calendar just year round. This is great uh, strategy for um, organizations is seeing what, a, what emails do well or better than others. So A-B testing is, you know, back to school when we would do scientific experiments, you would change one variable to kind of see which does better. So maybe you change a button color, you say donate here and it's a blue button or a green button does, maybe blue actually does better than green, you know? So different testing modes of your emails to see what does better. All of that data can be pulled um, so that you have the strongest email campaign for the actual event. So something to start thinking about, uh, and also you can do this year round. Um, a clear ask to donate with a link is essential in your emails. Uh, you are gonna wanna specifically ask what you need from your donors. Um, be clear, be concise, be to the point, you know, donate here, uh, and just keeping everything kind of really clean and clear and crisp. Um, so then uh, also you're gonna wanna pay close attention to the timing of your emails. Um, Pre-schedule as much as you can beforehand. Have a template email ready for things to send out on the regular day of. Um, throughout this kind of webinar, my whole plan for you all is to just start thinking about things that you need to pre-schedule because that's going to help take a bunch of, you know, the weight off of your shoulders on the giving event. Um, pre-schedule e-blasts um, leading up to the giving window. You're going to want to send reminder emails to people announcing that you're participating in San Diego Gives. Um, once you have a campaign goal in mind, say you have your campaign goal of monetary amount or you have a non-monetary amount, like you want to get a certain donor count, um, those are all really great emails to start sending out. Uh, if you have matches going live, that's going to be another thing. So kind of like creating maybe a spreadsheet or a timeline of different emails that you're going to want to send out to your supporters to make sure that they're aware of what you all are doing, that you're participating, what's coming up is going to really help you have a stronger campaign. Um, and like I said, creating templates is really good. So if there's kind of information that you need to get out on the day of, you can just fill in the missing gaps if you want to let people know multiple times, like, hey, here's where, at, where we're at. We're only X number of dollars away. You can pre-schedule all of that. So all you have to do is fill in, you know, the missing dollar or donor count um, to let people know. Um, and like I said, just make sure that this is all kind of formatted for phones. Uh, and be sure to send tests to yourself as well. Um, the last thing you want to do is send an email to your entire database and then have the link to donate not working. So <laughs> make sure you test all of that prior. Um, we're going to get into social media. So for a really high stakes day like San Diego gives, you're going to want to stay in your comfort zone. So just going where your audience is is going to be key. Um, if most of your followers are engaging on Facebook, you only have a couple on Instagram, you can put some weight into Instagram, but most of your efforts are going to want to be put into where your audience is, so Facebook, if that's your case. Um, 
just really going to where your followers are, making it easy um, for yourself. Uh, again, a lot of the strategy is going to come back to pre-scheduling. So we definitely recommend scheduling any post you can ahead of time to save yourself, you know, the effort during the giving day. You're going to have a busy, busy kind of week. Uh, even the day is going to be busy and the week prior is going to be pretty busy too. So using the tools available to you, like Facebook's, you know, pre-scheduling publishing tools, the creator studio, if you use Twitter, you can go in and pre-schedule some tweets, um, looking and seeing at Canva is a really great option. So pre kind of building your social media posts is a really good idea. Um, it's also super helpful to assign someone on your team to social media for the event. So if you have very well trusted volunteer um, or maybe you have a board member who has offered to help out in some capacity, you can have them monitor your social media on the day of the event uh, so that they can kind of quickly respond to comments, interact with your followers, uh, put some posts up there. Um, for part of your social media strategy, if possible, and if you have the budget, we do recommend budgeting a little bit amount of money to boost some of your social posts or some tweets. So 10 to 20 bucks for an ad for the day can go a long way. Um, you'll just want to make sure your ad is targeted properly. If you're not sure how to target an ad, you can always just default to targeting the people who already like or follow your page. Um, in terms of the type of content that do well on social media, it really depends on the platform, but in general, you know, your photos and your videos are going to do really well. Um, you might also want to set, you know, when we're talking about goals, you might want to set a social media goal. Perhaps you want to get out of the box and try Facebook <coughs> live streaming um, for a segment. If you have, uh, if you're thinking about how to put that into play, perhaps you have a match go live and you want to announce the match live. Um, you could do like an Instagram kind of live stream. Um, different ways, different kind of methods of that are going to deliver different algorithm friendly kind of content. Um, live streaming is going to be a strong one. Um, and then, of course, be sure to use the materials that are already available to you in the toolkit that have been provided by San Diego Gives. Uh, I took some screenshots so you can see kind of what they have already provided you a bunch of different printables, um, different kind of icons that you can start sharing on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, so you can check those out in the toolkit. Um, and then, of course, using the hashtag San Diego Gives, um, there is a social feed on the San Diego Gives site. So anytime you use San Diego, hashtag San Diego Gives, it's going to populate in that social feed so you can get a little bit more exposure during the event. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to say it again, pre-schedule, pre-schedule, pre-schedule. <laughs> Build, put a bunch of time into just building out as much material as you can. Um, one thing uh, we'll also talk about is kind of following up with your donors. I think a really great strategy is to kind of pre-build thank you notes uh, in Canva. So when you have donors give to you, perhaps you want to, you know, throw up a little thank you that you built in Canva where you all you've pre-scheduled it, um, pre-built it, I should say. And all you have to do is add the donor name. Um, little things like that go a long way in just helping your day run smoothly. Um, also getting into more giving day follow-up, uh, follow-up is going to be super important to keep in mind with your strategy. So while you're planning your content and your strategy, you'll want to also kind of think about how you're going to say thank you to your donors. Um, consider something like making a video or sharing a photo of your staff and a thank you message. Um, in your post event follow-up, you're going to want to make sure you also talk about the impact of the funds you raised, really try to close the loop on your campaign. So if you were fundraising for something in particular, maybe you needed a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something like that, um, you'll want to kind of send an update uh, periodically just on the progress that you have made even after the event has ended. Um, so I say that because while the giving event will be over, the relationship that you have with the donors and your donor base, especially the new donors that you are going to acquire on the day, um, that's going to be ongoing a relationship that you're going to keep building. So keeping that in mind, you'll want to make sure you have an onboarding plan in place for your new donors um, as you are preparing for the giving event. So consider mailing them a welcome packet, um, sending them a celebratory postcard or a happy email video um, that just lets them know that you, they've been seen. Um, that their funds are helping you, their time, their attention is helping you. 
um, and uh, that's going to really kind of help them consider to continue supporting the work that you do. Um, so that is a lot of content. Uh, these slides will definitely be available for you. I think that if you kind of look through them all and kind of dig a little deeper into each one of these topics, that'll help you. Um, Mighty Cause also has a blog where we have a ton of different articles related to fundraising. Uh, so if you have any specific questions or if you need ideas for how to kind of get fundraising momentum and just different tools available to you, you can check out the full blog posts. Um, I don't think I linked the blog, so I'll link that in the toolkit, Lauren, uh, because there's just a ton of great stuff. Um, oh, you, you unmuted. Yeah, I just, uh, there's a few questions. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's a question about funds being dispersed, whether it's through a link to a through bank account or checks, and it's through either. Yes. You want to explain? Yeah. Yeah, so um, you have the option of doing checks or you can do um, EFT, so bank account. Um, you can set up EFT through your organization profile and then uh, Mighty Cause will get you all sorted out and get it set up. Um, the other option is to do a check, which is mailed by the 10th of the following month. Um, so checks go out once a month. Um, EFT is going to go out twice a month. Checks are going to have a $5 service fee per check. So um, if you are able to set up EFT, that is always the route we push. You'll get your funds quicker um, and there won't be a service fee. Um, but yeah, you have the total option to choose either one. Um, there's another question about social media strategy from Christine. She said, do you recommend we target our platform that has the most followers or the one that pulls the most impressions? Um, I would, I mean, well, I guess it depends on the numbers that it comes down to. Um, I think wherever people are most engaged would be the route to go. Impressions are good. I, I think that if you don't have a really strong, say, like Instagram following, um, it doesn't hurt to still connect with the people that are following with you. But if you have limited capacity and you're having to decide between the two, I would go like if you have more people engaged on Facebook, then go there. Um, you could always run a small ad, just letting people know on Instagram um, that you are participating in the event. There's also because Instagram and Facebook are so connected, it's pretty easy to connect the two of them. So to duplicate to like pre schedule a post that goes to both. Um, but if you're having to sit and monitor one, I would go where most of your people are. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I think, you know, we've one thing just to say real quick, too, is just about support at I, I don't know how many giving days events that you guys have Sarah but a lot and then I know how many people I send to mighty cause support so I think um for the most part because uh, you know there's a discussion about asking support a handful of times for things and not getting something mm -hmm. I'm happy to always if you email support at I can always if need be right I, you can email info at as well I mean there's don't go without an answer don't go too long so definitely email info at San Diego gives and then we can help route that too if you need it but I know that they're busy and I know they do a great job because I've like I send 10 people I don't know how many people do support at mighty cause Sarah but it could be one or it could be 30 I don't know but um, <laughs> it's a small team we're all yeah we're all a small team yeah if you need um a little nudge to support just let Lauren know and then we can um get it sorted for you What other questions does anybody have either about right this webinar last webinar mighty cause in general should sarah are you done maybe that's the first question i should ask I, yes i okay, yeah i had a ton of content but i feel like i talked really fast so you did if anyone um has questions on specifics or would like more information on any of the topics we can kind of dive in a little bit I'm really grateful to just of everybody because these ideas for like the proud member logo and the all these things come from I'm, I'm grateful office. This is the first year we did office hours and it's been really great to not only just ask the questions, but people saying like, oh, have you thought about this? And you're like, oh, my gosh, no, I didn't. Thanks so much. Like it's a community event and that we're only as good as, you know, those that support it and those that have the idea. So definitely not putting extra on anybody, but grateful when people have 
really great ideas of ways to make things better and send them along for sure. Yeah, I love that. I love that you all have office hours and I've I've actually passed that idea along to a lot of different um, giving events because it's amazing. I've, I just think that's really great that you all offer. Um, looking through my notes to see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about. While you're looking, Sarah, the first one was really scary because it was like you don't even I mean, you, literally all it is is like it's a Zoom that's mm -hmm. like a one -on -one. You, have, you have no idea what's going to happen. Right? <laughs> like you could you could have no idea how to answer anything or it could be great. And so I did the first one and then it was like the rest of the group afterwards was like, oh, my gosh, it was not scary. You're good. You know, that's you just awesome. get the information you have. And if you don't have the answer, then we follow up with it. But I don't see it too much. Um, I think it, like really all I want to just let everyone know is um, you are going to know your organization best and the time that you have to give to planning your event. Um, and so I think it's easy to get a little overwhelmed by like all the different routes and all the different strategies that you can have. Um, so just like taking a minute, thinking about your goals, having kind of a clear plan in place for like how many dollars you want to raise, how many donors you want to get. Um, and just like also setting non-monetary goals is a really good starting place. Um, like if you, if you say you don't have, you know, a donor follow-up plan in place, that's a really great goal to start getting started as well, as far as like non-monetary goals go. Um, so you can really just kind of grow in really wonderful ways by participating in San Diego Gives. Um, you also have, of course, an amazing support system uh, with Lauren. Um, so if you have any questions or if you need any support, you can just reach out. So that's a, uh, there's a question. I don't, Sarah, if you see it, if, if your goal is to raise $200,000, do you think it is best to start small and work up or ask for the whole dang thing? I added dang. Dang wasn't in there. <laughs> um, I would let everyone know if your goal is 200,000, let oh. that be a public goal um, and then create your mini goals. Um, so if you're at the end of San Diego gives, you want $200,000 in your pocket. Um, it's a good point to work backwards from that date. So however many weeks um, of early giving there are uh, and kind of starting to set milestone miniature goals. So by, you know, July 16th, when it opens um, for the next two weeks, our goal is to get, say, I don't know, $10,000 and then 20,000 or 25. Like you, you can kind of set these mini goals to work towards your overall goals. And say you reach 200,000 um, and there's still a full day of the event left, I would adjust your goal. You can adjust it on your homepage, celebrate, let everyone celebrate, and then let them know, like, you all are so amazing. Our new goal is 250,000. Any other questions? And yes, the it was asked a few times the we do send out a weekly email to all nonprofits. I'm sure the slides and everything will go into that email as well as they'll be like I said, I feel like if it's kind of like a broken record response, but if you're looking for anything, they're probably in two places, uh, both under the same subcategory on the website. So if you go to resources, the San Diego Gibbs University will have Anything that was recorded and had slides will be up. Um, like the office hours, we don't do that because that just doesn't, uh, we just don't do that. But the ones that have presentations will be up and then any, any kind of nonprofit um, resource will be under the toolkit. Awesome. Well, thank you. I was gonna say, yeah, go for it. Sorry, I was just going to say real quick, there's a few things this week too. There's um. I would definitely show up on Wednesday for the media. Um, it's not a training, but it's our PR consultant who's doing, um, talking about how San Diego Gives can help PR and, and how you could be a part of it. So that's one of the biggest discussions, right? Is like, do we put out press releases? How do we advertise for our own campaign? So our PR consultant's gonna go through all of that and talk through exactly how we're um, utilizing nonprofits in that. So I would come to that and or at least get the recording afterwards. That's great. Um, 
Yeah, you guys put on so much wonderful things. It's really great, the resources that you provide. Uh, well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, that was a ton of information and you had to listen to my voice for far too long. So um, let us know if you have any questions. I will upload this video uh, as well as the slides. And then of course, if you're kind of reviewing everything and questions pop up, reach out to Lauren, reach out to our support team. Um, we'd love to point you kind of in the right directions towards different resources, whatever you need. Um, and have a great time fundraising. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day. So, bye, everyone.